the papers are ready. The independent starts this morning. President Akufuado cut sort for 400 megawatts bridge power project. And uh, that's on the front page. Also, here, yeah, Visa Ford case, very serious. I'll take action. That's according to the uh, Speaker of Parliament. The Ghanaian Times has the power story, the LPG plant, and others here. 250 uh, million cities needed to reclaim Galamsey lands. That's from uh, government. That's the Ghanaian Times. The finder, $30 million cocaine vanishes at Tema Port. Officers under whose watch this happened uh, the finder says are still at post. Uh, that story, the LPG plant, is also captured here. U.S. to deport 7,000 7, uh, Ghanaians, uh, we're told, is also on the front page of the, the finder. The Heritage has the same story. 7,000 Ghanaians to be deported from the United States. Uh, Gold Street Business, new pay and refund policy on importation to cumbersome. Daily Guide, Mahama angry over free senior high school. Uh, foreign agents pop up, and uh, that's the story. Some photographs here, and Dumso tops my agenda. That's according to the president. And um, there's a story here venture capital boards issues dark checks. Daily graphic energy sector gets big push as president cut sort for world's biggest LPG fired plant. That story is also captured by several other newspapers. And then declare position on Galamse as she be the charges political parties. BNF teachers, academia industry link threatened as students pay for internship papers and uh, the statesman also carrying that story of the largest uh, LPG plant for Ghana and the issue of the alleged um, saboteurs of the free senior high school. My guest to do the talking this morning to my extreme uh, left is the communications director of the CPP, Kadri Abdul Rauf. Kadri, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Brian. I hope you're doing great. I'm doing very good. Thanks so much for spending your Fridays uh, with us. And then uh, in the middle is a member of the NDC communications team, Yao Apia Kudi. Good morning to you. Good morning, Hope you're brother. doing great. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you so much you? for spending your Friday morning with us too. And then to my immediate left is also a member of the NPP's communication team, Eric Chum. Good morning to you. Good morning. I hope you're good. I'm very well. Thanks very so well. much for coming. Now let's start from <coughs> here. Uh, this story uh, is carried by the Daily Guide, um, the issue of... Uh, the uh, free senior high school. Uh, Daily Guy says, Mahama angry over free senior high school. Foreign agents pop up. And then the statesman also has a similar story that says, Mahama hired free senior high school saboteurs and maxed. Uh, comes with photographs of some uh, persons believed to uh, have been hired into the country to sabotage the free senior high school. The Daily Guy says that former president John Mahama is seething with anger over media reports suggesting that he is working behind the scenes to scatter President Akufuado's free senior high school education. Now the story goes on and on and says that some people from South Africa uh, have been hired into the country and are collating data. That's according to the Daily Guide and the Daily Statesman. But uh, the spokesperson for the president, Joyce uh, Bauer, uh, has uh, denied the allegation. Uh, he vehemently debunked media reports suggesting that he's also on record to a rubbish report that the ex-president is the one who has brought these foreign nationals into the country to sabotage the free senior high school. So a daily guide and the statesman carry these stories. We can begin our conversation right on, on, on it. Uh, Eric, let me begin with you. Uh, we, um, the paper, the two papers are suggesting that there are attempts to scatter uh, the, the, the project, the program, but it does not state how, apart from saying that the, the persons that they have unmaxed are in the country collating data as to what it will be used for, we're not told. How would you react to this? The fact that the people are collating data and the idea is to sabotage the free senior high school. Good morning once again, mm -hmm. and then also uh, good morning to all the viewers out there. Now, um, I think that it's important that um, if such a thing is happening, mm -hmm. as it has been reported, right. Um, some uh, thorough investigation will be done to, like you said, ascertain exactly what these individuals are doing in our country mm. and exactly what they are collating this data for. Now, um, for it to be sort of linked to the former um, president, uh, John Mahama, as well, I think that that sort of uh, linkage should be established as well before we even um, 
go any further. Mm. Now, the story, I mean, from both newspapers doesn't necessarily give us an in-depth uh, view of what really it is that they're doing. Right. And it makes it extremely difficult to, um, to analyze or even comment on the issue. Mm. But, I mean, for me, I think that uh, anybody, uh, be it internal or external, who has any uh, designs on trying to sabotage the free SHS uh, should be dealt with accordingly. Mm. But we, c we shouldn't be jumping into conclusions until uh, the authorities involved have done proper, have investigation. Done proper investigation. And then we can move on and have a, a proper conversation on that. But uh, how is, is it possible to sabotage the program? Uh, so that's why I'm saying that it's a, a bit confusing. I mean, you need to establish the one, what is the modus operandi of this uh, individuals? Mm. And then secondly, uh, what is it that they are going to use the data for? Right. And then who is behind them? And then we probably would now start uh, looking into the motivation as well. So for now, um, I think that we probably would have to uh, get whoever is investigating more, more the stories. And then exactly also what is the authorities themselves to go into uh, doing some kind of thorough investigation oh. for us to arrive at exactly what hmm. is going on here. All right, I'm grateful. Yeah, uh, Yapia uh, could be. The spokesperson for the president has denied this and said that it is just a government sponsored uh, rumor and uh, people should just ignore it. Is that how you, you also speak to it too? Of course. Um, I think it's good morning to your viewers. Mm. and when you look at the, 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 the substance of the, of the reportage, mm -hmm. I mean, I find it very difficult to understand the basis of these accusations. I mean, this is an ex-president. The questions we should be asking ourselves is that, is he in charge of government machinery? Mm -hmm. Is he the person in charge of state security and so on? I mean, what is he going to do to undermine a government policy? Is he the one in charge of assigning or allocating resources for the implementation of this policy. I mean, of course, he is not in charge, clearly. And so I find it difficult for uh, some media houses that are associated closely with, 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 with government to be reporting on, 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 on such matters. Uh, it is worrying. I mean, when you look at the history of the former president and his track record in terms of his commitment to education, I mm. mean, it is... is, 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 is is undebatable. I mean, his commitment to the free for for the um, the 200 SHS and so on. His commitment to the expansion of access. His commitment to a gradual approach to the implementation and access of education and so on. And so, I find it difficult that a person of his stature, I mean, will be just be, I mean, be, be, be dealt with in such a manner. It is worrying, and I, I think that it's part of the several accounts and attempts. To, 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 to try and run down his achievements and so on. Mm. I think that the Ghanaian people are the best judges in terms of his contribution to building this country. And rightly so, just as the, the spokesperson of the former president has put it, this is, there's no truth in it. This is just a, a false accusation. And, and so those who are accusing should, should come out with the facts and justify their case. Yeah. Mm. I see. I'm grateful. Ralph, the, the two <coughs> papers are suggesting that uh, the ex-president is in, engaging in this because uh, he wants to stage a comeback and that his uh, comeback will depend on this free senior high school because it is a well-accepted project and so if it is accepted then there will be no need for the president coming back. And so the idea is that let me kill it so that I can come back. How do you what do you make of this story? Well, uh, let me also add my voice in saying a very good morning to our cherished uh, listeners and viewers. And then I think that th there is a saying that there is no smoke without fire. Mm. But in Ghana, I have seen smoke without fire. <laughs> Just see smoke oozing out with no fire whatsoever. But you know, come to talk about this kind of allegation. First of all, we have to all recognize that these kinds of allegations have history in this country. They have history. You recall that during the NDC era, virtually anything that happened, particularly when the Dumso issue started, the argument was that it was MPP's they were responsible for it. Everything, it was MPP that was responsible for it. 
That is the history of this kind of allegations. Mm. So now that the MPP is also in power, you know, the reverse now becomes true. But my own view on this issue is that I do not see it as a matter that we even have to spend time in discussing. Mm. It is lying flat. It has no scintilla of truth for so it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't actually add up. So for example, let's look at it this way. If President Nana Akufuado is so committed to implementing his flagship project or program that actually got them so mad political capital in 2012 election and then 2016 election, how can former President John Muhammad cripple you know, such a move? Even if he so wish to do it, how is he going to do it? Mm. So I think that this is just part of, you know, the unfounded allegations that the Convention People's Party has always spoken about. We have always said that uneasy is the head that wears the crown. So in, when you are in power, sometimes you have to be very careful as to some of the things that you see. But when you leave power and those things are used against you, you find it most uncomfortable. Mm. So my take is that it doesn't appear to me as something which is true. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. I do not think that former president John Mahama would want to associate himself with any such activity because any responsible citizen of this country who would want to crash or cripple such a project if you are responsible and you know the implication of that project to the youth or to the beneficiaries of it. So I strongly oh. believe that it is a tall story. It's, it's, it's wearing a red beret. <laughs> and then it should be disregarded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful, Raouf, uh, Communication Director of the CPP. Let's jump to the Ghanaian Times this morning. Uh, more chaos over MDCE nominations. Uh, the paper says that uh, there have been reports of chaotic scenes across the country since the announcement of the uh, MMDCEs. Now, apart from Zebila and Zavlugu Nantong, the Ghanaian Times this morning reports of one, uh, Tolon District in the northern, Bruza North <coughs> in the upper east, in Pohor district in the western regions. Uh, in Tolon, for instance, we're told that some chiefs and youth are against uh, the nomination of the president DC, uh, Hajia Amama Shaibu. That's where the uh, difficulty is. Uh, we're told of other uh, places where there are uh, chaos. And then again, the Ghana Society of the Physically Disabled is also expressing dismay that only one physically challenged person was among the 216 MMDCs nominated by the president, according to them, only one. Now, it lamented that despite the numerous pleas to government that some disabled persons were among the participants and qualified, the president left them out. And uh, Mr. Clifford Owusu-Ansah is the national president, and he made that lamentation in an interview with the Ghanaian Times yesterday. That's the story uh, so far. Eric, again, I'm, I'm beginning with you. Uh, the the the, the chaotic scenes we recorded, some have suggested that it, it will die down. It's, it's a normal thing. People have contributed to bringing the party into power, and so they, they will have to be rewarded. So it will die down. But how long is this expected to last before we return to normalcy? Right. Um, thanks once again. Mm. I think that uh, we also have to uh, situate this whole issue in the fact that We've had 216 mm. um, of these mm -hmm. nominations, and we have some uh, disturbances in a few areas. So you would have to say that, by and large, that has been an extremely successful exercise. Now, I would caution the various individuals who uh, are basically hiding under some kind of, um, or behind some cloak of being the youth of the MPP mm. or whatever in basically uh, f doing these things in the various uh, mm -hmm. areas that these things are happening. The reason why I say that is that, listen, I mean, the president has a mandate to, uh, to govern. Right. Now, when it happens like that, he would choose the individuals that he deems fit to be able to execute what his vision and his um, mm -hmm. ideology and everything is for the country. Mm. Now, sometimes we will disagree with that particular uh, uh, domination that the president has done and all of those things. However, it does not lie with any individual to essentially suggest to the president or 
uh, even uh, stampede the president to make a decision that will suit them. You should be consulted? No. A lot of wide consultations have been done. Now, it happens that um, in a political party like MPP or even everywhere, mm. there will be more than one individual who is qualified for a certain position at a time. Now, le yesterday I had an argument which I thought was extremely plausible. Even when you want to look for a vice president or a minister of communication or finance, whatever, there are three, four, five, six individuals who are extremely qualified to fill those uh, positions. Mm. But what happens all the time is that an individual will be asked to take the role for the time being. So what happens to the, the, the remainder? Yeah, the, the do, I mean, do you see their supporters going out there on a rampage? No. So I think that there's, a room, there's, there's enough room for everybody to essentially contribute their quota to this particular administration. This whole idea of uh, some kind of seeming uh, impatience or taking the law into your own hands and then causing damage and all of those things should be um, excused. Now, of course, once it comes to the fact that some negative things have happened, it's almost uh, necessary and, I mean, to deal with it. Mm. And I implore the various uh, security agencies and authorities to essentially make sure that these things are forestalled and also we have some kind of maybe uh, sober reflection of really what is the motivation for <coughs> uh, individuals insisting that that particular individual should be made MC or DCE, because whatever decision that you take, you still have a certain group of people who will be unhappy about it. But that also uh, moves into the whole um, arrangement that the president has actually also shown commitment to. That is electing uh, DCEs and MCs. If, if it, because if it, if before, before you go it, there, I, is it not a worry that perhaps leadership, political leadership, in the build up to elections, Promises five, three, four persons of being made DCs, M M uh, Metropolitan Chief Executive. So when the victory is won, then all these five or four or three are now waiting to 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 fit into that position. No, and that's no. where the chaos. Uh, no, starts. That, that, that is that is not the case. That's a bit simpler. It doesn't happen. No, that, that doesn't say that. You don't. You don't, no, you don't uh, promise more than one person that look when we come to power, you become the DC. No, listen. That's a bit simplistic. Um, trying to um, sort of justify that position with the fact that oh, anybody that works within a political party mm. or is, is a member of a political party is automatically due a political appointment. It's not, it's, not, it's not the case. Now, what happens is that, like I said earlier, there's enough room for individuals who have one way or the other worked for the party to mm. come to power. And not even just that. Every Ghanaian is basically meant to have an equal opportunity to serve in government. Right. Now, I was making a point about the fact that, for me, I have also personally held the position that these DCs and MCs should be voted for. And that's the position that has been held by the it president. This problem? You see, the reason why it does is that we, so you, f you find yourself in a, in, a, in a district, right? I would take my district, for example, where you have various towns and then you have various interests and all of those things, mm. right? Now, regardless of how much consultation that you do, you would find yourself in a situation where a certain group of people would be a bit disillusioned. So in that case, you go out there and put yourself up to be voted for. Now, that decision becomes a collective decision. I see. Then it would s leave out all those things that happen when they have... Um, People you're, are you're not sure for. that even when we are voting then for them, this same thing could then happen. Then apart from that, you, you we've had your we've parties will be jostling to have their... Fair, uh, fair, fair, people, fair enough. Uh, but it's like, I mean, how many times have you heard a group of people going out there and say that we want to change our member of parliament even before the, the time? Yeah, Unless, of course, something major has happened. But you see, then you've, we've had examples of traditional authorities or church groups or certain groups saying that, oh, we like this particular DC, MC, and all sorts of agitations. But when we are clear in our mind that you are voting for this individual, mm -hmm. they have a mandate for four years, and I even believe that, when we do that, it would elevate the, 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 the number of people 
and the caliber of people that would actually put themselves up for some of these positions. I see. So for me, I feel that people should be a bit restrained. It'll calm down. They should be a bit restrained. This is isolated, as, as I said earlier on, we've done 216. And we've had, I mean, when you mentioned about four or five areas where mm -hmm. some of these things have happened. What it means is that the extensive consultation with them. But in every sphere of life, you would have individuals who will be unhappy with a decision. Even when... So, so, so for instance, the, the, the disabled are unhappy mm -hmm. that you gave only one out of 216. No, they have a... It's, it's normal. They, I mean, they we can't satisfy everybody. They have a legitimate concern. I mean, even when it comes to affirmative <coughs> action and <coughs> making sure that people who have uh, some kind of disability are also feel that they are part of the governance process. That's a legitimate concern that should be addressed. However, you also look at the fact that when it comes to making a choice and making a choice based on the fact that these are individuals who are meant, that, meant to go there and help prosecute and implement the agenda of government. Maybe other considerations will come into play. However, if we have to have a conversation going forward as a people to say that, okay, let's create some kind of quota system or have some kind of affirmative action for uh, some of these appointments, let's, so be it, let's do it. Yeah. However, what I don't like is where we change the rules when the game's already started. We can have a conversation, come to some kind of consensus going forward and saying that if we are going to do A, B, C, this is the sort of things that we want to do to make sure that everybody feels mm. like they are included in the, the whole but government But in this process. case, they are saying that Another they, they thing actually pleaded with government to include them. Another and yet they didn't get what they, they Yeah, they so it, it's the same argument as an individual who also have put themselves up and maybe someone else has been nominated. There are even examples of areas where individuals were put themselves up and the president saw it necessary to bring somebody totally different from the individuals that were, just because, like I said, that is an individual that he probably believes that would be able to go out there and execute what the man, his mandate is. Mm. So for me, I mean, I think that what is even commendable is the fact that we have, I mean, almost uh, 36 uh, women out of, out of the, the lot. Mm. Probably so we should 17% of them. Yes, probably yeah, we should that's have that's done more. But, I mean, it's a, it's a gradual process. I so mean, I'll take this opportunity are you to, are you to, sure to, are you to congratulate would, would be my... angry uh, that only 17% and you think uh, that it, it's okay? Let me, let me make my point. I'll take this opportunity to uh, congratulate my mother-in-law for being nominated as a DC for the Bolle Bamboy oh, okay. um, district. Okay. But, like I said, people should show some bit of restraint. Obviously there is enough room for everybody to play their role in the Nana Abidan Kwaku administration. Eric Shuma, I'm grateful. Rauf, uh, so um, we can't satisfy everyone. There are some uh, confusions at certain places. The, this, uh, the uh, society of uh, physically disabled are also complaining. But Eric is suggesting that we certainly can't satisfy uh, everyone, and so these are expected. Well, I, I think that... Um, in trying to build a truly representative society, a, a truly inclusive governance you know, system, it is fair and fitting that every you know, person in the different segments of society mm. must be given rules to play on the condition and only condition that they have good intentions. During the 2016 election, I happened to have campaigned with my Black better, who everybody knows his condition. And in going around the country, I noticed that for the first time, if I didn't know this, but through the campaigns, I came to the ultimate knowledge that the people living with disability, in fact, had very brilliant people amongst them. Very, very brilliant. In fact, virtually all the places that the districts that we visited, we met them one on one, we interacted with them. And in every district that you visited, you will find somebody who would make argument that is pleased, who would make argument that is very sound, which is just, you know, to suggest that they actually have the mental capacity to discharge the responsibilities of um, government. So I think that it is not a healthy sign that of 216, you know, DCs and then MCs, they have been given only one. I do not think that it is a healthy sign Particularly so when we are talking about building an inclusive 
you know, a, a, a government. So I think that the president could have, you know, done more uh, concerning these people. Mm. Because one thing I've also noticed is that most of the time we think of them when it comes to menial jobs and then what have you. But they have capacity that can even take up the highest job. So even ministerial appointment, the argument should not be concentrated on DCs and MCs. But even ministerial appointments, they have people that understand the issues, mm. that can actually make policies that will speak to the felt needs and the aspirations of the Ghanaian people. So me, I think that on that on that ground, the president could do more, and the MPP should look at it. If because it's not too late, I believe that appointments could be made. You know, some of them will be rejected, as we have seen right. the Hula Balu, the Buhaha across the country, where people feel that no, this person should not, you know. Have been given Eric thinks it's job. an isolated. Uh, oh no, it's very normal. Even under the NDC, we saw mm, it, right. and it's understandable. In fact, I was reading a certain book some time ago, written by Paul Nugin or Samuel Nugin, you know, and then the title of the book is, you know, uh, 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 I've forgotten the title, but he made a statement in the book which was very, very instructive, that men of means have conventionally sought power by intimating to the people that when they get power <laughs> and the uh, Cup gas field, you know, the spillover effect would get to them, and people would come mm. out and rally in their numbers and support them to get power. That's but a when they get power, that's a socialist, uh, <laughs> when they get power, uh, the cup uh, never gets through. So you see that the you people know, will be agitating. So me, I, 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 I strongly. Hey, the title of the book is "The Big Men and the Small Boys." That's the title of the book, "The Big Men and the Small Boys." So I mean, me, only I a, believe a socialist that will read I a book like that. that but he's wearing, a, he's wearing a, <laughs> a designer, <laughs> designer slippers. <laughs> you know, like champagne, <laughs> champagne drinking uh, so, socialist. Eh? So <laughs> that is the issue. So me, I strongly believe that uh, those people that are, I give, like Chum said, and I agree with him, that for every position, there are more than usually 10 people that are qualified for the position. And it, politics is all about lobbying. So if your lobbying skills or the person that was doing your fronting or your bidding wasn't that effective enough to secure you the position, you have to change strategy. Because sometimes the buhaha would not change the, you know, uh, and the direction of um, events. Mm. And I also agree with him strongly. And of course, in, even in 2008 manifesto of the Convention People's Party, we argued on the urgent need for the election of DCs and MCs, uh, MM, you know, Es and what have you. Because when that thing is done, I believe that it's an effective panacea to some of these things. So, for example, if you want to be the mayor, if you want to be the district chief executive of any district, go and test your results with the people. Go and submit yourself to the people, and the people will vote. And then once they vote, it can hardly, you know, I have never seen that instance where before the tenure of such a person expires, people come out and say, we don't want him again. It doesn't happen. You're, ruling, that that Ralph, you're ruling out uh, that kind of... Uh, I don't know if you call it, to call it friction, between a, 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 an MDC who belongs to uh, a party other than that of the ruling government, the friction that can come. That, that would definitely come with its own burden. Mm -hmm. That arrangement would definitely have its own crisis. Yeah, but you know but it that notwithstanding, of course, mm. it's a possibility, mm. and I can never push it outside the range of Some have uh, argued against this uh, election. But me, I strongly believe government that in trying to strengthen our democracy, it should be possible for us to elect our DCs. And then, for example, at the local level, there are people who are likable. There are people who understand local problems and who have solutions to them. And then these people, because they are always based at the local level, they do not even know a big man or a big woman in Accra. So for, for purposes of appointment, they will just sit in Accra and find somebody who comes to, you know, speak good to them and then appoint them. And then that person will go there and then they will be fired out there. So me, I believe that when we throw that thing to the people at the district and the municipal level, you choose the person that you want mm. to be your executive. I think that would be a very good uh, decision. So in lines and in tandem with principles of democracy, any person who hopes or wishes to actually become a leader must go and test his resolve with the people. And I think that is a very you know, effective way of dealing with some of this crisis, even though I would agree that even when we get them elected, it will have its own crisis. But I believe that in line with be better democratic than principles, we're yeah, yeah, I believe <laughs> okay. that. Yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the, the, the issue of the physically disabled persons and the fact that uh, they think they have been left out, and also the fact that uh, uh, we're beginning to see some disagreement over who gets the, the, those positions.
my brother, I think that the decentralization system as we have now, I mean, in fact, decentralization has been with us since, I mean, pre-colonial. But the form and shape as we have it, which originated from the 1980s, and the PNDC, I mean, took a bold decision to ensure that we go on this tangent. In fact, in the 1992 constitution, mm. a whole chapter, chapter 20, was committed to decentralization and local government. And so it shows that as a country, there's a certain consensus as decentralization being the way forward in terms of building our country. Um, with regards to appointments and so on, there's been a lot of arguments whether it should be elected or it should be appointed and so on. And there are very firm and fair arguments in support and against some of these positions. But the point is that when Eric was speaking, he tried to water the situation there and said, oh, there are just pockets of, I mean, violence and so on. No, but that's the truth. So but of course, I mean, the people who are watching and in whose district these things are happening will, will know that, I mean, the real situation. Mm -hmm. But the point is that we are trying to, the constitution mandates the president to be the appointing authority. And so power is vested in the president to ensure that his, his representatives at the local level are appointed. One of the main problems that we've seen over the years is the patronage nature of our politicking and the fact that um, people who are members of political party mm -hmm. tend to think that um, <coughs> after the war, the, the, the spills of war is shed. It's so it's, 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 it's a real problem with political mm -hmm. party organization now in the country. But the point is about how politicians also carry themselves post-election and the kind of promises that they give. Eric's party made a lot of promises. And in fact, not only to the general Ghanaian people, but to also close NPP members. And that is a clear manifestation of what we are seeing all over. I mean, with the Delta Force issues and all that, you hear that they say that we were assured that this is going to happen to us. With the MMDCs, you hear people. And there's even the allegation of bribery and so on. You hear people saying that well, we made so much payment in anticipation that we'll be rewarded. I mean, to I mean, who? Yes, yes, make make yeah. payment to who? Yeah, but in Brong and Hafo, we are hearing reportage and mm. so on. Wow. But the point is that there's been these accusations about some of the reasons why there's a total uproar in terms of some of the choices and so on. There's also been the issue about people thinking that uh, it is only people who are close to the corridors of power that get appointment as against the local people that understands the local matters of the people. I mean, just yesterday I was monitoring and I had people saying that oh, Gloria Kufu's brother has been appointed as Shai Sudoku and it was part of the right. APRO. Yeah. Just Eric has also let us know that uh, it says his mother-in-law has been appointed <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> no, so but, but, yeah, so but, you no, but I'm, I'm just saying that that is one of the <laughs> arguments <laughs> right. against some of these appointed white people. So if you are closer to power like Eric, <laughs> then you can get some, your mother-in-law <laughs> appointed <laughs> to be a chief executive. Well, I mean, that's, so that's, that's, but that's, the that's point actually is that mischievous. No, but <laughs> I'll, I'll respond to that. But the point is that, that. that, is, that is, that's been the fair argument that people have been making, that mm. we are local people who are engaged in the struggle, who are in the trenches, working to ensure, we were assured that when we come back to power, we will be rewarded in this form or shape. And here we are after the elections, and people think that because they don't know some big man who is in charge, they are being disappointed. I think that's also one major problem that we need to look at. Again, you hear about the issue about affirmative action and so on, women saying that, oh, we've not been given a fair share. You have disabled people saying that. I think that the principle of competence should be established. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that you are a woman and you are not competent doesn't mean that you should be given that position. The issue of tokenism should not be encouraged. And so um, the main reason should be about who can best lead the development agenda. But they raise an issue that in a, in a Jisu Drabi, they have a one person there, they mentioned the name, uh, the, Daily, uh, the Ghanaian Times mentions the name, that the a Jisu Drabi, they have uh, one uh, Kweku Chumesi in team, mm. who's a strong NPP member and showed interest in the Jisu Drabi NMC race and was never considered. That's the story Ghanaian Times put out from the leadership of the fiscally challenged persons. Okay. So the issue of competence, they say that we have the men. Yeah, I'm, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying, that, that that's not the point I'm making. If mm. I, the point and the general principle that I'm, I'm seeking to establish is about 
the fact that once the, I mean, the main criteria should be about the ability to lead the district mm. and to drive the development project of the area. Um, whether you have a certain form of disability or whether you are a female shouldn't be the main criteria. The criteria should be your ability to de lead the you development. Give them the chance, of course, they the should be the they should challenge. Of course, they should be given the chance. But I'm saying that there are equally competent disabled people that need to be given the, the chance. Um, the, the, the issue about these agitations happening and the argument that the elections of the DCs is what will remedy this situation, I, I, I am quite worried because I'm hearing this argument all over the place that in, in the bid to just ensure that there, there's a minimize, I mean, we minimize the approach that accompany appointment of DCs, we should just elect them. I think that the, 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 the decentralization process is more serious than just trying to not get, I mean, agitations after, after appointments. The point is that if we are seeking to just elect DCs, what is going to happen to the, 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 the rationale behind the, the, the appointment? I think that we didn't just get to where we were. The, 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 the dual allegiance nature of our decentralized mm. nature that's the, the, the appointment of DCs. You find out that horizontally the DCs are being checked by the president right. and vertically by the assembly. That is the presiding members and the assemblies that have the powers to ensure that DCs are, are in check. In fact, they can even re revoke the, the, the nomination. Mm -hmm. so right. After the president appoints, the assembly will sit down and the two-third majority will vote on it. The point I am seeking to establish is that we should be careful in the nature, and that's why I was happy about the approach that the strategy that the NDC wanted in the government white paper about appointing some members and then shortlisting at the civil service and then we elect on them. Because you see, there's a certain philosophy and ideology that every regime tries to develop the country. Mm. And so if you are not careful, like you said, minority groupings in the, at the local level may even be excluded from getting representation in some of these through the elections. Yeah, through the elections. Some so districts are, are yeah, dominated by, by certain some tribes certain and so tribes on. And so we should be careful, of course. Um, we should also be careful in areas mm -hmm. where certain tribes and parties have total dominance, right. not to, 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 to ensure, of course. You see, the, 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 the chief executive is the head of, I mean, the chairman of the district security committee and so on. These are all matters that we clearly need to look into about allegiance and so on. I am f for the security of tenure of DCs. That is by putting in place a mechanism where the DC doesn't feel that he's totally at the beck and call of the president. But we should also be careful not to, in doing so, relinquish totally a certain control that will be from the top and so yeah. on. So um, <laughs> we, we, we should be careful in how we, we, we go about it. I, I, I am... I am I am. I am. I, I would rather um, say that we should tread cautiously, because we, we've seen situations in in, 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 in in this country where the development agenda are just being frustrated by purposes of people belonging to one political party okay. or the other. Right. A clear case is the um, how do you call it the, the national sanitation bill. It, it became just an event where people from other political parties refused to participate. And it became just an event, a serious event that, that people just felt that it was just an NDC project and so only NDC people should participate. So the cultural setting and the nature of our country itself, we should factor it into some of these. Before taking this decision. So yeah, again, in, 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 conclusion, okay, again right. in conclusion, I think that the point, even if we want to elect, is not just by handing over political decentralization, that is just electing them. It should be accompanied by the assigning of resources, and that is fiscal decentralization, administrative decentralization, and all that. So it's not just by putting them there yeah. as and elected and, them to and leaving fate. them to find resources where it is non existent. Okay. So it is a holistic thing, it's not just about electing them and so on. Pure decentralization should accompany, and that also comes with its limitations. I mean, we are a unitary republic, and mm. we should find a balance between that. All right. Ralph, I saw you trying to come in <coughs> uh, before Eric yes. could come in quickly. I just mm -hmm. wanted to make a little correction from my friend's submission. You know, uh, Apia uh, Kubi has yeah, actually yeah, argued 
to the effect that, um, in fact, I think the question I have to make is that when you see some of us make argument for the election of DCs, mm. we do not put, you know, minimization of conflict at the local level as the strongest argument that to, 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 to flute. That is not our strongest argument that we make. It cannot be a There's correction. It is your opinion. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. no okay. I will tell you why it's a correction. So I'm coming, coming. I I'll tell you why. Okay, go okay. on. I, I, I will tell you why it's a correction. Because you sought to make the explanation that crisis minimization is the argument. And then I'm saying that that, 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 is, that yes, and I'm that saying that only that is his opinion. And his opinion actually was a response to what I said earlier. And I'm saying that... No, that I, is have, I have <laughs> actually... I have heard Mustafa Hamid say mm. that government is going to deal with these agitations by ensuring... And in fact, Eric reiterated it, that one of the mechanisms to deal with... No, but he said he left as one. But so we can... So, so, so you see where the can point I of correction so is. Eric, I'll, 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 I'll bring that, that is what you have you heard. Heard. Allow Ralph from Mustafa uh, wrap up on this one. So if that is what you have heard from Mustafa Hamid, Clearly from the Convention People's Party, when we make argument for the election of DCs, it's not just to minimize conflict at the local level. Is it not key? Is it important? Uh, that is not the major argument that we put forward. As for conflict, conflict has always been part of human society. Even, even Kobe as he said, he has internal conflict that is running through him. <laughs> conflict is everywhere. <laughs> you understand? So when we say that DCs should be elected, we are doing that as a way of satisfying requirements of democracy mm. so that people... Okay would elect the people that they want to see lead them. That is the mm. argument that we are making. Okay. Mm. And Let me bring Eric in. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Eric, I, you earlier wanted to uh, react to uh, <laughs> the issue of Madame uh, Gloria Kufu's uh, brother and then your in-law. Is that what you wanted to do? That? No, you see, I mean, I think that that's just, uh, <laughs> uh, that's just mischief. Well, the point is that um, I don't think that there's anything that um, stands in the way of individuals who are related either biologically or by extension. Right. Mm. Uh, who are also members of a political party, or even to a large extent Ghanaians, and they have the capacity to do whatever it is that they are meant to be so doing. So it's, it's not an issue. No, I, I don't think so. Okay. But you see, I think that this whole issue of even the uh, uh, decentralization system or local government structure is one of my pet uh, sort of peeves. Listen, we have to either say we want to be democratic or not. Now, if we had been, we, we want to carry on with this particular dispensation, then let's basically practice it to the letter. Of course, we would have local. We can tropicalize it and localize it to uh, to the extent. But listen, our constitution even deals with this thing to to a, a larger extent. Directive principles of state policy mm -hmm. spells out clearly what we need to do or what individuals are meant to do at the uh, regional level, at the district level, and even at the, on the national level. Now, so an individual who is there by virtue of the fact that he has some kind of uh, executive nomination is not a law unto himself. Now, if we go forward and we... But you uh, had a beck and call of the president. Yes, you know but the, the, the point is that, listen, even the current, in this current state, right, you still have political, and we, we can feign ignorance all we like. Right, but this is extremely political. It's, it's partisan, mm. right? Now, at a district level, you have uh, individuals. That are, I mean, thirty percent of these indi individuals who are meant to be nominated by, by the president. Mm. Then, even at the local level, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I like uh, uh, local governance, so I'm interested in what happens. So I know who my unit committee member is, who my assemblyman is, who my president member is. I even at that level, mm. these elections are fought along partisan lines. Now, what we need to do is to put together a proper legal regime to deal with issues. People have made uh, mention of issues with even security in terms of DICEC and all the... Um, is, it, is it not real? Yeah, so you put together a legal regime to deal with it. How do we do that? But that is, it's, 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 it's possible. I mean, I am not a, a, a lawyer or a legal person, but I'm sure that even if... We, we we don't have to do a new one. The existing laws and regulations that we can use to 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 to, to make that function properly. Now, the government is meant to be one that is in tandem with what the aspirations of the people are. So, at the local level, if for one reason or the other there seems to be a large concentration of, let's say, NDC or MPP people in that particular constituency, so be it. That means that. Whatever it is that you're trying to prosecute mm -hmm. has to be, you, you need the buy-in of the local 
people to be able to do that. If either it's MPP or NDC or CPP, that is what needs to be done. Eric, so, in situations where minority groups feel that they are always ruled by these majority groups, they never get a chance to also lead. Isn't that going to create some worry? Listen, two uh, tribes. One is 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 the majority. So anytime there's an election, they get to win. The, the, the minority is there. Don't you think they'll feel suppressed? And perhaps that could uh, lead to something. Listen, I mean, rebellion can. I have always we've felt seen this happen. I've always even our own independence is a story we can we can relate listen, to. Listen, I have always felt that we uh, put too much emphasis on our uh, what basically differentiates us than what brings us together. Now, I will not sit here and say that we don't have some kind of local tensions when it comes to where you come from. Mm. But even in areas where you have people of the same ilk, right? So I'll take my uh, village, for example. So you have a place called Abonpe, where I come from, where mm. my father comes from, and a place called Junasi. We are all supposed to be Achim people mm. in the same locality, uh, just half a, um, a kilometer away from each other. So essentially, the two towns are supposed to be together. However, you would get the impression that when it happens that for one reason or the other, one village seems to get all the nominations. The other ones will feel peeped. Mm. It, is, it is normal. However, somebody needs to be able to convince me if there's another form of doing this that will not bring some kind of uh, tension or democracy probably, as difficult as it is, is it probably the best way to deal with some of these you things. You don't think that if the, the vacancy is announced, and everyone is asked to bring your CV and come for the job of a DC. It, it, it can't cure what you, you're talking about. No, no, because about. it's subjective. It's like, it's like, um, <laughs> it's, it, <laughs> you, know, you know why it's subjective? It's, it's like even having a group of individuals, yeah. mm. right, bring their CV for a job. Right. Okay. So the best person gets So the, now, but how do you even determine? I mean, people have even argued that um, having an interview or seeing a well-detailed uh, uh, curriculum vitae or resume it's not an indication that when the person actually gets into the job, so they are going to perform. perform. You understand? So everything that you do okay. would have some kind right. of subjectiveness. I, 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 to I, have a, a, so I, run, I want <laughs> to talk about this project, so I'm running out of time. But uh, quick, just, just one just, minute. Just a quick, quick one, one on, on, on that. Mm. I think that one of the things that this election, the argument has been to, to, to is to ensure security of tenure mm. of DCs so that they can drive the development agenda. I think that is the main reason. Right. Because if they are appointed, then they are the beck and call of the appointing authorities. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I would go in for uh, a hybrid version of what we have, looking at the, where we are as a country. I'm grateful, yeah. Let's move on to the daily graphics this morning. Ghana's energy supply is set to improve following the sword cutting ceremony performed by the president uh, for work to begin on the 400 megawatt power project in Temo. It is Christine, the bridge power project, the $1 billion initiative is being uh, spearheaded by as a consortium, I guess, a group of companies. We are told that uh, the president said the project was consistent with the government's vision of making Ghana self-sufficient in power generation for industrial and domestic use. Eric, let, we have just about five more minutes. So <coughs> uh, this is boosting the energy sector. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, we, what will it add to what we have okay. in terms of energy subsidies? Now, um, this government has shown a clear commitment to changing the economic landscape. Mm. And by so doing, uh, focusing on industrialization, massive industrialization. And for that to happen, you would need the yeah. energy. energy. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, even when you're talking about one district, one factory, and uh, basically revamping our petrochemical, if it even does, it exists, mm. I mean, uh, making sure that we have a petrochemical industry, um, adding value to the raw materials that we have. And even for domestic and uh, commercial usage, we need that sort of um, energy to be able to do that. Apart from that, you're talking about gas being relatively cheaper than mm -hmm. the other sources of um, um, energy, using it for to power various plants. So for me, it sits right there. I mean, the I think that, that the, the story actually uh, is apt enough to say that. Listen, this is in line with government vision to be able to... I, I'm not cutting it because yeah. I'm running out of time. But if you remember, in the build-up to the election, I think the, the, the conversation was that it is not that Ghana needed more of these uh, 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 projects. 
but it's about it fueling th those that were existing to produce power. No, I, well, apart from that, I think that the argument, another argument has been that do we have the right energy mix? Okay. Right, so if we don't, and we are going to go into production of whatever that would require uh, a lot of energy, mm. then it makes perfect sense to uh, diversify the mix to make sure that it's um, cheaper for industry to try. So that it's, it sits well with uh, government's agenda to industrialize and uh, move us from our current state into a state of uh, self sufficiency. Self -sufficient okay, Eric, I'm grateful because I'm running out of Ralph, quickly coming. Another uh, addition to our energy uh, uh, levels. Yeah, definitely, it's going to have significant impact on industry and then domestic you know, households and what have you. Because you recall that in the past few years, the country went through a protracted energy you know, crisis that brought untold hardship and difficulties to many families. And I'm aware that after now, some families are still battling with the effects of that. So this is a novelty. This is actually a step in the right direction. And then I believe that it would not only help reduce the cost of uh, you know, electricity in the country in the longer run, but it is also going to make it accessible. As we are speaking, power just went out in Yendi. <laughs> and that is what we are talking about. <laughs> so I believe that, <laughs> I believe that um, it is a, a very good move. Mm. That uh, should be encouraged. Okay. Yeah. Wrap up for me. Well, I think that um, the issue of energy, the capacity and so on, generation, uh, wasn't the, the, the kind of rhetoric people like um, Eric engaged <laughs> in post-elections. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. the, the point was that we have so much cap <coughs> um, generation capacity and so the point I was asking when he said yes. it's the mix. Yeah, well, now he can bring an adjective. <laughs> <to call it. laughs> no, but, but, that's, but <laughs> that's the truth. I don't but, think but that. But that. He's so he's 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 on a side where you are being, even people may think that you are not being, you are not being patriotic enough. Mm -hmm. But the point is that these arguments happen in time. And so when there was a particular return that, oh, we don't need to sign on additional generation capacity, the country is broke. And now the point is that, oh, there's a need for a different mix. So oh, we uh, need to uh, sign uh, on other <laughs> and so on. Then I have a problem. Yeah. But the point is that, of course, nobody can overwrite the need for, 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 for energy in terms of the broader development of the country, in terms of its linkages with industry and so on. And of course, we know about the achievement of the, the previous regime in terms of additions to, to, to the energy mix. Uh, we, we, we are watching, and of course, time okay. is the best teacher and judge. Mm -hmm. Daniels, of course, now, like he said, the lights are off in the end. <laughs> well, Yesterday I slept in darkness. That is That is an yes, indictment. You, you know that will be saying? an indictment on the sort of uh, you know, this is uh, energy policies and the, how you were able to uh, manage our energy You know, sector. I said I slept how in because darkness. Because the NDC... This is not true. The NDC... Listen, listen, listen. The NDC, before leaving power, had told all Ghanaians that they had fixed the energy situation. <coughs> However, <coughs> it's very, listen, it's very clear that if you've taken, it, it took you five years even to activate an uh, emergency um, power solutions, bringing in Ameri and Kappa, we are just supposed to be temporary, right? It took you five years to do that. Mm. Now, three, four months after leaving power, if we, the light goes off in Yendi, just opposing it to the we argument that... the NDC. Of course, no, 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 the argument is that, the argument is that, if we had fixed it, and then now we have excess capacity, right, then we wouldn't be having those problems. But so fix it. But that's exactly what that means. We've gone ahead and settled the debt with end gas. Can you, do you remember that? So you have fixed it. Yes, do you remember that? Do you remember that end gas would truncate the service to Ghana by virtue of the fact that the NDC administration either refused to pay or unable to but pay you, you or didn't paid. even have the so presence you of mind to do so. so when it we goes have done. We should ask you. Yeah, why but I'm not saying I'm, 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 I'm not saying that we are absolving ourselves from our responsibility. Exactly. But the point that the argument that 
they fixed it. Okay. And that in three four months, we have right, come right, into right, power, right. and the situation is That's one minute. That's my point. So, no, 20 if, seconds. 20 seconds, okay. Just if, if there's installed capacity is more, then there's about just swelling and powering these things. Okay. So it comes down to money. Okay. But the point I want to conclude. Which we found the money to pay. The point that I want to conclude on is that President Akufuado, on 26 May 2009, told Ghanaians that excuses cannot be a substitute nobody for has given nobody and has so, given an excuse. So, so we are not expecting we, we should accept the excuse. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Rauf, I hear CPP is uh, opening its biometric membership drive. Yeah, that is very correct. You have started. Okay. No, it is actually an attempt that the current leadership of the Convention People's Party, led by Professor Edmond Dilley, mm. to drive the Convention People's Party into the century. In fact, to make it a 21st century you know, party, we have launched a very comprehensive data system. And all of us know that no effective planning can be done without comprehensive, you know, database um, policy. Mm. So that actually was also facilitated by the United Nations Development, you know, program. And I think that they deem and deserve some part on their back for that. Okay. So we are very sure. And then we have said to people that the party office now is open to any person who wants to register. And this time around, we want to migrate, you know, the old system into the digital system so mm. that at least every member of the Convention People's Party would have the opportunity to get himself electronically with All right. Ralph, I'm grateful. Kadri Abdul Rauf is the Communications Director of the uh, CPP. Yawa Piakubi is a member of the NDC's communication uh, team. And Eric Tum is also a member of the NPP's communication team and a Deputy Chief Executive of the Ghana Exports Promotion Authority. I missed it from the beginning. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's fine. All right. So Friday, thanks so much for staying there.